You know, Ivan, proper preparation prevents poor performance when polishing. Correct. I won't try to repeat. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is the DIY Detail video series on ceramic coating. Yeah, and preparing your vehicle for polishing. Right. And we've done another video. It's just pulling everything down. Put it up above right now. It's yep. about how to do this method with a foam cannon, with suds. But a lot of people think that's the only way I'm gonna properly cleanse my paint before I polish. No, we're gonna be doing it rinseless. Now, rinseless confuses a lot of people. It's a word that's confusing, sort of like your P, 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 P thing in the beginning. What was that again? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> lots of P's. Rinseless doesn't mean you're not rinsing. Rinseless means you're not rinsing it off afterwards. And that's where people get confused with the rinseless. Well, why would I, okay, why would I want to use rinseless? I mean, I may have never polished my car before, so right. I want to do this right. Why not just use a foam can? I mean, I've seen soap before, I have a pressure washer. Why would I even want to mess around with rinseless? Well, some people don't want to use a pressure washer. Some people don't want to use soap. And a rinseless is a completely different technology. It uses surfactants, it uses polymers to lift, encapsulate, and separate the dirt from the surface. And we're gonna see that in this video. And we're also gonna see how to prep it using a pressure washer, yes we will, because this one is actually dirty. And yes, it's not fake dirt, we didn't stage this. This has been following our bus for 3,000 miles since the last time it was cleaned through rain, through gravel roads, through all sorts of stuff. That's where this comes in. Yeah, it's very dirty. And the reality is we are going to get to coating this vehicle. It's gonna be another part of the series. Yeah. And we're gonna to get to polishing it, but right now you're the rinseless guru. You're gonna teach us how to rinseless this vehicle properly so that it is totally ready to polish. And safely. And part of that is we are, like I mentioned, we are gonna be using a pressure washer. Because people think using the pressure washer takes everything off the surface. Well, we're gonna show you that it doesn't. What people don't do is allow it to air dry. So they'll use a foam cannon, they'll use whatever, and then they just start washing. Well, they don't actually see the results of the foam cannon, of the pre-spray with the pressure washer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we're trying to do the ultimate in safe washes. Despite the fact that this car has never been polished, it's 10 years old, it tailgates a bus throughout its whole life. So it's not exactly perfect paint. That being said, we're gonna show you the safest technique possible to prepare your vehicle using a rinseless. And between Incredible Suds and the rinseless, both are safe. It's whichever one you choose. There's no wrong way, there's no right way. It's whichever one fits your style, your needs, and your environment. Absolutely. This is gonna be a fast way. I typically think rinseless is a faster way than Incredible Suds. And speaking of fast, we could cut this out because I feel like we're getting real wordy. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, why don't you get it started? First step, the pre-rinse. Now, in here, we used our wash bucket to fill this up. So in our wash bucket, we diluted half an ounce to a gallon, which we have four gallons of water. I put in two ounces of the rinseless. So one cap full for every gallon of water. Or if you're on the metric system, one cap full for every four liters of water. That's how easy it is. So you fill up your rinseless bucket, yep. diluted properly, and then you just dip your sprayer into that bucket. Right, and we've pumped up the sprayer, and now we're gonna be pre-treating. Now, the other video that he's gonna link up here again, he's gonna link it a couple times during this video. Apparently I'm linking it a couple times. Yeah, he's good at this. I have no idea how he does it. But anyways, on the other side of the car, what we did was we pre-sprayed with the foam cannon, the door and the front fender, leaving the rear fender undone. We're gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna be pre-spraying with the rinseless, getting it on here, and then just aligning the tip. I like it being vertical. Anyways, we're gonna be putting the rinseless on, on here. Now, one thing about these sprayers, if you actually put too much liquid in them, you need space for air. So the more air space you have, the longer or the less pumping you've got to do. Now we're gonna leave one panel untouched. Right. Why? Because we're gonna show what the pressure washer does and what this actually does to pre-treat and to lift the dirt off the surface. As in, we're gonna pressure washer this entire side, pressure wash the entire side, and hopefully you're gonna see what we think will happen, which is that on the sections that we have pre-treated with rinseless, where we're going to emulsify the dirt before we even touch it with a pressure washer, 
that these panels, again, hopefully will look a whole lot cleaner than the one that we just spray down with water. And Ivan was saying yes with his mind as he so carefully concentrated on this car. Yeah. I'm good with the alliteration, the C's and the P's. I enjoy talking a lot and cleaning cars, apparently. All right, so, so we're, we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes, like we did with the foam, giving it the same amount of time to emulsify, to encapsulate the dirt, and to get it off. And then from there, we'll use our pressure washer. Are we gonna let it dry on the paint? Well, the rinseless, if it dries on the paint, it's not a big deal. But we're not gonna go to that point. Now we're in an air conditioned studio here, so we don't have to worry about it drying on the paint, which is a godsend for us. But nonetheless, we're gonna allow this to dwell. Once we're satisfied with the dwell time, which is, we're pretty much there, we're gonna start with the pressure washer. We're gonna be using the same pressure washer, same PSI, same nozzle as we did with the soap side. So now we're gonna pressure wash off the whole side of the car. Now we pre-treated this area with the rinseless. We're gonna pressure wash it, then let it air dry to see what actually happens. So off we go. we go. So now we're going to let this air dry and we'll show you what it looks like once it's dried. Now Ivan, look at this. This is what we pre-rinsed with rinseless. This is what we didn't pre-rinse. Both of those got pressure washer, but the difference is night and day. Exactly. There's a big difference and the difference is there for a reason. The rinseless wash emulsifies the dirt, meaning breaks it down. Then it lifts it off the surface with the polymers. So it's taking that dirt away from the surface, lifting it off. And then when the pressure washer hits it, that dirt is encapsulated and it's easy to wash off. Now, of course, it's not perfectly clean. We need a contact wash. And people that think that they can do a wash without having to contact the vehicle, so they just chemically are washing it, it never gets as clean. You always leave a little film behind. So that contact wash is important, but we want to have a safe contact wash. Yeah. And that's where the rinseless or incredible suds comes in. And depending on which one you like using, they both do the same job, just get it done in a different way. The products look a little different, they smell different, they behave differently, right. but they help you clean your surface to prepare it for ceramic gloss, yeah. which is our detailing spray, right. or ceramic coating, or- Even quick beads. Or even quick beads, yes indeed. Or they just help you clean the paint. Yeah, exactly. So now we're actually gonna clean the paint. So the first step again, like we did before, we hit it with a foam cannon. This time we're gonna use our IK sprayer and wet the surface down, get it emulsifying, get it working again. Then we'll go at it with our wash sponge and be ready to go. I'm just wandering around aimlessly because there are too many fun products around here. And you'll notice that our rinseless has a bit of a foaming effect to it. That is something that's desired for us. Some people were asking for rinseless to be foamable and it foams a little bit, but if it foams too much, it actually takes away from the rinseless, the chemistry of it. So if you really want foam, you can get our rinseless in a foam cannon at about three to four ounces. Yeah. And you can have foam with it. If you're wanting to foam a rinseless, you've never done that before. You it can. It can certainly work in that way. Yeah. So don't forget the hood and the, oh. the back end there and the wheels again. Now the wheels were particularly nasty on this vehicle. So, and what we're seeing there is Nick doesn't have enough. He's not pumping enough. So I want to pump. Yeah. It up. All right, there is we go. Is that sufficient vigor? Yeah. So when you get enough pressure inside the sprayer, it starts doing its job. I think we're pretty good, Ivan. Yep. Might want to get that rocker panel a little bit, please. And in our bucket, we have it preloaded with half an ounce to a gallon four milliliters to a liter, however you want to look at it. Okay. So we don't want to use our sponge soaking wet like this. We want to give it a bit of a squeeze. And you'll notice we have two different colors here. Why do you want to give it a bit of a squeeze? Usually people think more liquid, more rinseless wash solution, the better. Yes and no. Uh, the no part of it, yes, you know, more is often better. In this case, we actually want the sponge to be absorbing the dirt off the surface. And if it's too, 
wet, it's not going to lift the dirt off the surface. It's just gonna add more moisture to it. And you'll notice our sponge has two colors. And the red is a more slightly aggressive foam, not hard in any way. It's not gonna scratch your paint. The black is a finer, softer foam. So depending on which one you like. And in this case, like any washing process, we start at the top and work our way down. You like this move where you raise the windshield wipers? Are you okay with that? Yeah, you can, by all means. I'm just trying to help you out. Yeah. It's almost like we're a team here. That have is you noticed, the idea. Have you noticed the red and black? We even have the Fiat as red and black. <laughs> we're, getting, uh, we're getting into the color scheme here. I even bought red shoes for this, so. <laughs> we're gonna have to show you his shoes. You, you said you wanted to be hip like the cool kids, right? That was your whole... Not at all. Your whole motivation behind it? No, I just saw these red shoes and thought, hey, wow, that would go great with the floor. So, see my shoes, my feet disappear into the floor. And with any rinseless wash technique, or any wash technique for that matter, the less pressure you use, the better it is. We're getting a lot of people asking about this sponge. And depending on when you watch this, it could be relevant, could be irrelevant. Uh, hopefully mid-October, this sponge will be on our website, DIYDetail.com. We're very excited for that because we all love rinseless washing. Yeah. And the sponge will also work with soap. Now, not the red side. It's not very soap friendly. But the black side, definitely you can use with a soap. And why is that? It's just the composition of the foam. And I know you've taught rinseless for years. Uh, no pressure as you use the rinseless wash sponge or wash mitt yep. on the paint going back and forth. Right. And you're going to dunk, what, once a panel? Exactly. Ivan, you're washing the bottom of the car. It's so dirty down there. Aren't yes, you going to re-aggravate with that dirt into the paint here and then scratch it up? No. The, it comes off the sponge immediately and it allows it the rinseless, basically it's encapsulated. The heavier dirt that could actually scratch your car is going to the bottom of the bucket. There might be a little bit of floating dirt in there. It's not really dirt, it's just more, look at it as staining more than dirt. It's been broken down by the time. Exactly. It's been broken down, it's emulsified. It's done what it needs to do. It had a good life. Exactly. So now what we're leaving behind and is a slightly lubricated surface with a, the rinseless on it. A very lubricated surface. I just want to show you this. You can see the dirt that we've taken off the car onto the sponge. That's what the sponge is supposed to do. And a lot of people are worried that that dirt is going to come back onto the vehicle. We're just going to dunk it into here, squeeze it once, and we have a perfectly clean sponge. Now, Nick. I don't see any suds. What's happening? Well, it's the rinse's wash. It's right. It's working. It broke down what was on the faces of the rim. You're seeing the rinseless wash actually foam a little bit, but then you're seeing a lot of dirt and grime just kind of oozing out of the barrels here. So it's definitely breaking down a lot of the brake dust. Um, and it's definitely something that I'm going to want to Rinse out with a pressure washer, you know? Well, we're gonna be rinsing the whole vehicle with a pressure washer. Exactly. Once we do the iron remover step. No, but it's, it's really cleaning the wheels well. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's impressive. You know, one thing a lot of folks may not know is you can use iron remover on paint and on rim faces. So exactly. I'm just gonna get this going here and you can explain iron remover and the clay towel. Yeah, exactly. And the iron remover is not going to damage the rubber. It's not going to damage anything, but it is going to help it clean. Now we have our perforated clay towel and a couple of reasons why we prefer a perforated clay towel. Nick, you can answer that. Well, I've tried a lot of clay towels in my day and all I know is that this is my favorite. Right. Because you've got the one side that has the microfiber on it and you've let that sit in your rinseless wash bucket. And so you've got a lot of lubrication, a lot of moisture in there. So I've noticed but if I press too hard on this while I'm claying, actually there's rinseless wash still in here that will yeah. help lubricate if I use pressure, which I shouldn't be doing. Exactly, yeah. No pressure is the way to do it. And you'll notice Nick is pre-spraying with the iron remover. Uh, 
you can do it. It's not necessary, but it's- More is always better. More is always, well, actually with the iron remover, more is better except for the odor of the iron remover. Mm -hmm. And one of the way of mitigating that odor is by not spraying it everywhere in the air. And- Like I just did. Right, so what we do is we spray it on our clay towel, and now we're using the iron remover combined with the rinseless as our clay loop. How many sprays on the clay towel? Two or three. It's not a scientific number. And yeah. what's great about this method, and I know you're doing it and are perfectly good at talking about it, but you've got the lubrication of the rinseless on the paint, and then you've added a little bit of iron remover on the paint to sort of give it that second layer of lubrication and chemical decontamination, and then you're coming in with agitation. Right. Did any of that make sense? It sure did. Okay. Our two, three sprays. We'll continue with the clang. Is iron remover safe on all exterior surfaces? It is. And you know, people are, we're gonna get a comment, you're not wearing gloves. No, I'm not wearing gloves. And actually I should be wearing gloves, but forgot to put them on. One thing about the iron remover that people need to know, chemically, it's pretty much perm solution. So we're removing the contamination from the surface of the paint, and we can actually hear it in the towel, and we can feel it. And when you feel it, that's when you stop, you can rinse your towel, you can add more lubrication, and continue on. Or you can actually flip your towel. So usually about one panel per side of the towel. So you're gonna have four sides on that towel. After that, I don't wanna dip it back in my wash bucket. You can, but then you have a stinky wash bucket. So I'll typically just rinse this out in water, and then it's ready to go again. Yeah, and if you're only doing one car in the day, then yeah, you can rinse it in your wash bucket. And then when you're done, clean your wash bucket, clean your, your clay towel and you're good to go. And some folks on white paint might see a lot of purple happening. Exactly. Why is that? That's the chemical reaction of the iron remover to the iron. It breaks it down into a reddish looking substance. You know, when I first started detailing, the whole idea of a clay bar, claying the vehicle, it was all pretty intimidating to me. Um, once you do it, it's fairly intuitive, it's pretty easy, but for someone who's never even clayed, because we are doing this video about, hey, polishing your car for the first time. Right. Do you have any other words of wisdom about just why we're claying in the first place? Well, we're removing embedded contamination from the paint. And that embedded contamination, if we were to polish over it, we'd have a really interesting thing happening. We would actually still feel the contamination after we've polished. So it allows us to remove that contamination we're not gonna have our polishing pad moving around that contamination. It's now the polishing pad is just cleaning the paint the way it should. Now, one thing with iron remover is it does need to be rinsed. Now you can rinse it with the IK sprayer like Nick did there, or we can take our pressure washer. <laughs> and we've got a pressure washer. We have the pressure washer, so we'll use it. So I've rinsed it off, now it's time to dry. Right, now normally with a rinseless wash, you don't rinse it off afterwards. The reason we rinsed it was because of the iron remover. And no, we don't have any lubrication on the paint whatsoever at this point because we have water on the paint. But we really don't care because we're gonna be polishing. And the little minor marring that we might inflict with our drying towel will definitely come away when we're doing the, uh, the polishing. So not going for perfection here, just trying to dry the paint. We've done our proper preparation and we're very close to being ready to polish. Yeah. Now, one area that you do wanna be careful of drying is to make sure your windows are properly dried because we don't wanna to have to go over them again. I like to go over every area about 10 times. You do, you do it well. Now, I do one, it well and I take 10 hours. Hey, we're done drying. Right, we're done drying, now we're ready to polish. This is the point where we tell you, see you in the next video.